Hello, welcome to demo four. My name is Liam Crilly, and I'll be publishing an API using Nginx Controller, API Management, and Nginx Plus as an API gateway. First, a quick recap. With demo one, we saw Nginx Unit being deployed and used as the runtime engine for our application code. Demo two, use Nginx Plus as a reverse proxy in front of the application with content caching and other acceleration capabilities. And demo three took that one step further by a, adding the Nginx App Protect web application firewall so that we have a highly secure production grade web application available to our end users. And now with demo four, we're going to introduce two new components for API management. Firstly, Nginx Controller as our full lifecycle API management system. So this is where we'll be integrating, interacting with the system in order to publish our APIs. And it will configure and control Nginx Plus as an API gateway for this use case, it also being a reverse proxy to our Nginx unit runtime. So what's it going to look like? Is we have our space application deployed today. It's on space to nginx.org. That's the URI that clients are using to access the web app. And the web app itself is using an API to obtain the data that we have about our planets in the system. So with this demo, we're going to be exposing that API directly to clients on api.nginx.org, under the space URI so that clients can grab that data directly and use it in their own applications. Now, we're going to do this uh, because we've already got a Swagger, or in this case, uh, an Open API version 3 specification that describes the API that our developers wrote when they built the API for its internal consumption. So we're going to take this and we can use it inside Nginx controller. And so that Swagger spec is going to be imported into the system and then controller will publish that API. And when we publish an API with controller, we do it in two ways. Firstly, we publish it by configuring the API gateways and the reverse proxy to execute the runtime policies that we have for that API. And secondly, and simultaneously, we also publish the API to the developer portal so that external clients can not only discover what APIs are available, but they can also see the reference documentation for how to consume those APIs. So let's go ahead and make that happen. I'm logged in to my controller instance at the analytics screen. There's not a lot going on. And in fact, this system is pretty empty. I'm gonna publish my very first API. But to do that, I'm gonna drop into my services menu. I've got an app because everything in controller belongs to an app. So I've got my space app, but right now, it's uh, really empty. There's no published APIs or any other kind of components for my apps. Uh, it's a pretty empty system. So what we do want to do is create an API. So let's take that open API spec that I had and create that here. Um, so it's going to be my space planets API. And I'm going to configure this from an open API spec. And I'm going to just paste that in this window here. So let me go find where I've got that spec. Here it is, the full version of what we saw a little earlier, all my API endpoints, let's copy that, paste it in. And what that's done is initially pull out the description and the version of this particular API. So that's great, I can just step through. Here are all of the API endpoints that it's extracted from the spec. Awesome, and here's the API call the controller would make uh, if I wanted to also make this in the future. So let's submit that, I've got my Plants API version one in the system, but that's all it is. It's just an API definition. It doesn't do anything until I publish the API. And we do this so that we might publish the API more than one time. We might publish it internally and externally. Fundamentally, it's the same API, so we don't want to repeat ourselves. Let's publish the API then. Version one to be published, and let's put this on a unique prefix base path so that I can publish as many APIs as I like uh, on this same API to nginx.org system that I want to expose them on. So I'm going to use space v1 as my base path, and I'm going to strip that off when I proxy it to unit, because we know that unit just has it implemented as API, whatever. 
uh, we need to give this published API a name. So this is my planets uh, API. And let's say we're in production here. And now let's do our plumbing. So we're going to hook this up to the production API environment, to the space app that I mentioned earlier, and on our production API gateways. So what we have here is the ability to decouple the Nginx Plus instances that are API gateways from the logical API gateway that I'm publishing to. And in this way, multiple teams can share the same API gateway without needing to know the infrastructure details of which Nginx Plus instances are out there and which ones they uh, are allowed to use. And you can expose that through a logical gateway. So that's my deployment environmental plumbing. And now I need to say for each of my API endpoints where I'm going to route them to. Now we know in this case, it's a fairly simple unit backend, uh, but if we had a richer microservices application, we may well end up with a lot of uh, different container backends for each, maybe individually for each of our end API endpoints. So let's create that backend component uh, and we'll call it um, uh, planets uh, on unit and we don't need much more than that. Let's just make sure that we respond to API clients using a JSON response and not uh, look like a web server. And then the other thing we need to do is say, hey, what's our workload at the back end? It's my uh, unit app and it's available on uh, the back end. Now, I've got these running in Docker. Uh, so we've got a nice uh, internal Docker network. I'm running internally on port 881. Cool, we're good to go. That's the backend defined. Uh, I could do some more advanced settings, but for now, let's just make sure we can get an end to end test up and running. So there's my backend, no security settings. And now I can start dragging the URIs of the API endpoints. So API planets that we've seen, API planets, planet ID. Uh, let's get that on there. It doesn't want to go on there. Um, and we can drag all these over. And let's say that in this case, the search endpoint is not actually fully implemented or is buggy. So we won't route that one. We won't publish that part of the API. So we're all done again. Here's the API call I need to make to publish that API if I wanted to uh, repeat this in a more automated way. But without it, we can just go ahead and publish. So that's now happening. And I'm going to now flip over to be my uh, put my dev hat on and go and find this API as it's published on a developer portal. So I've got that at dev.nginx.org. And here's the developer portal for my space data. Developer resources, here's the space app. Let's double click on that. And here is the planets API. Rich information about planetary objects. Awesome. Let's get started. I want to start consuming this API. I want to make some API calls. So here it is. This is where we have hosted it. So again, notice that that prefix path that we made available so was space v1. So all of my API endpoints are now prefixed with that. Uh, let's pick an API endpoint. Uh, API planets looks like a good place to start. And so the actual published URI is coming from the API spec that we import into the system combined with the choices we made when we published the API for how it is in production. So it's on HTTPS URI at this host name with this prefix, and this is our full URI. So let's grab that out of here. Uh, if I wanted to, I could figure out you know, how to do this with Python and here's that code snippet. But let's keep it simple. Let's use the command line. So let's use my HTTP client, and that's the API that I pasted in. And there's my API response with my list of planets. Awesome. And if I were to add planet ID on there, let's get the Mars data. There we go. Great JSON response. So there we have an API, and it's published. But at this point, it's not particularly production grade. We've got no controls, no security whatsoever. So let's go and do a few of the things that we would expect to find on an API that's genuinely published in production. So flipping back to the controller UI, 
Let's go to my API. It's now published. So here's my published version, Planet Prod on api.nginx.org. Let me go and edit that. And if we jump into the routing section, remember that we didn't add any security settings against this backend unit instance. So let's go ahead and change that. And I'm going to add a couple of security controls. First off, let's look at authentication. So I'm going to add authentication requirement. I've got an external IDP configured. So I've got uh, it issues JWT tokens, JOTs. Um, and I'm going to say I need to get a valid JOT in a header. Uh, and let's say that header is called API key. Yeah, API key. Cool. So we require authentication. We could uh, be a bit more sophisticated and require uh, some claim checking in there, but let's leave that off. But now, and let's instead add some rate limiting as well. So let's make sure that any authenticated client, so that's the subject of the job, uh, can send no more than a very miserly one request a second. And if they do that, let's reject those requests with a 429 response. Terrific. So let me submit that. Now I go back to my command line API client and I repeat my API call for the Mars endpoint. We're unauthorized. So unauthorized with a 401. Uh, so we need to provide authentication. And I said that uh, I needed an API key header. And thankfully, I do have a token that my IDP issued to me earlier. So I'm going to paste that in there. There's my JWT. And if I do that now, I'm authorized and I get my API response. Fantastic. And just to make sure that the rate limit's also working, if I go nuts and make three requests very quickly in a row, we should find that yep, that middle request came in within a second of the last one and it triggered the rate limit A 49 response was returned. So what we've got here is we've published an API, we've enabled authentication using JSON web tokens, and we've enabled a rate limit so that not only is our web app production grade and available to internet clients, but our API interface, our published API, is also at the same standard. So that was the demo. We saw Nginx controller being used to publish our API so that it was available to external clients. And we did that with a combination of rate limiting and authentication to provide the production grade requirements you would expect for an external facing API. Thanks for watching.